mixed martial arts. As spectators and fans, we've seen these fighters in the cage, but what does it actually take to get there? This is a window into the lives of athletes who are facing some of life's toughest obstacles while training to become an MMA fighter. On each episode, we'll follow a fighter and meet their family, friends, coaches, and training partners who all come together to bring out the best in one another. Welcome to True Warrior. Our first story takes us to Palmdale, California, where we meet up with MMA fighter Michael Kreppel. If you talk to anybody that knows Mike, you, you'll find out that he's a great individual. He's, he's got such a great heart, he's got skill, he's got dedication, he's got a burning desire to be the best. My interest in MMA started, I think, in about 2007. I watched Robbie Lawler kick the crap out of somebody, and I was pretty interested in that. And uh, then my boys started taking Taekwondo, and um, you know that just kind of put it all into my into my reality. We went to um, a UFC. Um what do you call it, a convention in Vegas, and we got hooked on the scene. The reaction from my wife was awesome. Whatever you want to do, honey. <laughs> when the gym opened here, and he was like, I think I'm going to try out for the team, and I'm like, oh, OK. As an eighth grader, I quit football from getting, because um, I didn't like to get hit. And all of a sudden, it's now, let's bring it, baby. Come on. What you, what you want, what you, what you want. Right now, of course, mixed martial arts isn't very much in vogue. It's the most watched event in the world. It's about your willpower. It's about your core belief system. It's about your willingness to, to fight, your commitment to winning. My first fight was just this year in July. It was a great night, man. It was awesome. About an hour before I fought, I found out that I was fighting a guy who had never had an MMA match fight before. However, he was a world champion Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I felt quite, uh, quite good about it. But Michael is not your typical MMA fighter, as his fight goes beyond the cage. I've known a lot of great people in my time, and not only is Mike a great martial artist, but a great friend as well. But there is one thing that's keeping him from fighting again. Back in January of this year, um, I woke up in the middle of the night uh, with a horrible pain in my stomach. I mean, it, it was bad enough to wake me up. It was then bad enough for me to go, this isn't, what the hell is going on? And uh, I had the doctor take a look at it a couple days after that. Michael was over and he said, hey, I have this, this lump in my stomach and it, it kind of comes and goes. And so he's on my couch and he laid down. I kind of felt it. I did not feel anything. Um, it had, like the pain had gone away. So I had Jackie, my wife, buy some gas X. That's all I could think of was like, whoa, man, I got some gas going on here. A month later, Comes over, he goes, hey, I got something. It was, I remember it was on a Sunday. I was laying in bed with Jackie that morning. Systematically, I would work through my neck, down through my shoulders, through my chest, and then down through my stomach. Well, then the doctor looked at it, and she said, well, um, you know, there is something in there. I was pretty optimistic, thinking, well, you know what? It's pretty hard. Could be a scar, could be this, that. Immediately got him in Monday morning to, to, for an ultrasound, and uh, they called me and said, hmm, this isn't looking very good. It's very, hmm, very s ugly. So I said, okay, we need to do a CAT scan. I mean, I can't even really remember that anything except for the birth of my kids having such an impact on me in, in my immediate thought process. W when I felt it, I. I, in my heart, I knew that something wasn't right, but I have no medical training. Um, I get this call from the uh, 
radiologist and uh, he said, you know, your patient Michael Kruppel, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's not good. It's kind of like telling your best friend that he's going to die, you know. And I was instantly crying and I had to I had to go home and I knew they were waiting for me cuz they they knew that I knew, and I just was like, okay, you know, can you guys, you know, I, I was like, oh, I took about an hour just to kind of compose myself, you know, just going, okay, I can do this. Was diagnosed with diffused large B cell lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. When doctors discovered the tumor in his abdomen, it had already become the size of a football. It was horrible. I didn't take it very good at all. Um, Luckily enough, uh, my boss, my best friend, um, was the one who told us about it so we could be in her home, around family. Um, but it's a horrible thing to hear. I was devastated. The words really don't describe how you can feel about your best friend having a challenge like this. I was scared and I was a little bit um, curious on what was going to happen next, if he was going to die or not. It's over, it's bad, it's horrible. I knew that she was not going to do well with it. She was just lying in bed every day, crying. And when night came, she just didn't, didn't, just didn't want to get out. Hi, go, Michael, are you ready to fight, fight the, the hardest fight you have ever? Based. But apart from the dark scenario ahead, Michael is not giving up. He's ready to fight. I know that if anybody can pull this off, it's Mike. My, my mantra is whatever it takes. I'm just yeah. here to do it, whatever. Mike goes to chemotherapy every three weeks to fight this disease and shrink the tumor inside of him. Tomorrow I'm actually doing um, my third round of chemo uh, out of six, so we're right in the middle. Today's chemo day and uh, got about an hour drive to uh, meet with the team to get hooked up and blown out, baby. Let's do it. I'm, I'm just gonna live, continue to live with the plan that I'm not gonna get that stupid shit in six months after, I, after I've been cleared. And chemo sucks. There's hair loss. Um, possible vomiting. The worst part that I've experienced thus far is at the point of injection, they, um, I have bone pain. A couple times it was, it was pretty severe. A major, major factor for our recovery and in the speedy fashion that's happening is from mental and physical fitness. It all comes into play together. And not laying down and playing the victim, you know, being, oh, whoa, man, I'm, I have cancer. And I, at, in the same breath, don't want to take away the fact that some people find their cancer at different stages where we found mine, at, you know, early. Michael didn't have this gym and his, his working out, physical activity, it helps immensely if you exercise. So I think this has just enhanced all his coping skills and uh, the ability to relieve any kind of 
depression, stress, anxiety that you have when you find that you have a could, you know, a terminal illness of some sort. With a fight scheduled in a few months, it's crucial for Mike to balance his recovery from chemo with his MMA training. When I'm done doing chemo, um, the doctors insist that I take a minimum of five days off. Um, I can't. I personally don't do any more than five days because I want to get back here and train. I, I think his recovery would be half of what it is right now. So the fighting and you know just the the, the mental discipline of fighting and learning and stimulation and being positive has helped him immensely. Mike is a true warrior. He will do whatever it takes to get healthy. Holistic medicine is definitely part of, uh, we're supplementing Western medicine with Eastern medicine. Went vegetarian, I'm eating wheatgrass. My, uh, my protein replacement for my diet is, uh, is mo mainly beans. I don't even know what it is. The, my wife is just saying, eat this. There's no easy way. There's no chocolate cake diet. There's no free lunches. Discipline is taking the harder road. I want to run the proper course as a fighter. That's, that's my main goal. I want, to, I want to fight in MMA. Michael's training regimen will be probably, um, he'll be working out in the morning again, but later in the morning, and then doing his boxing, his uh, kempo, and his wrestling at night. Another one bites the dust, baby. Feeling pretty good. I'm halfway there. Halfway. Finished uh, chemo three today. It's about five minutes ago. And feeling good enough to get in the car and drive home. Go party a little tonight. Tap out style, baby. <laughs> so we're here at the fundraiser, and uh, we're at GBG's. My my buddy uh, Ash put this on for me. And uh, it's all good, man. Uh, we just trained together at Tap Out. It just hit home when we found out that he had the cancer. Hey! Hi, this is the restaurant that I actually work at. I figured, I mean, this is what I can do sure. to help out. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Professor. Hey, how you Brother feeling man. today? I'm doing all right. Yeah. yeah. How's your day? Good. Yeah? yeah. Just everybody eating, having a good time, everybody coming together as a family, and a portion of the proceeds will go to Mike and his family to help them out with everything, so. Gotta go like make that. sure my girl's, I like my, my girl's okay. Hi, right, man. Hey, I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah. With his next fight a couple of months away, Michael will have to double his training in order to get ready for what's coming his way. Halfway through his chemo treatments and the tumor shrinking in size, he's well enough to fight. The tumor has shrunk by 58%. You got to play the game. You got to play the positivity game. After the initial impact, I knew that Mike stood a very good chance of overcoming this. Being a warrior in the cage and in life, there is no messing around. Even though the fight is scheduled, the fact that Michael has cancer could scare fighters away from fighting against him. I've been told that it may, it may be hard to find somebody who, could, who would actually take the fight. The best scenario for me would be that no one would find out um, about the cancer or anything like that. But apart from the rumors, a fighter has accepted the challenge to face Mike in the cage. The fight grows every day. We're, um, we're in a pretty unique situation right now. I'm feeling good, like healthy. And this next fight, I got a whole nother, I got a whole nother thing that I'm, that I'm fighting for now instead of just getting in there and trying to get a win for my MMA record. I got kids, got a great wife, we got a beautiful life. Michael is ready to fight back.
to go out and fight. You know, I've been waiting for this for a long time. It doesn't even matter if I win or lose. With the diagnosis of cancer, you know, I still made it through my training and I'm here. overall feeling about tonight um, it's a win period cancer sucks you know and this this is something that that in and of itself being getting beat up you know in the cage it, it's a choice that I got to make to get in there tonight Michael Kreppel is a true warrior The guy that I fought, he uh, had very nice things to say. It's my second fight, my second loss, and now I know it's not a fluke. I have to work on my ground game. The emotion um, from seeing my wife and my son was, was pretty awesome. Um, they took it pretty hard. I told my son to look at me in the face and know that I'm, I'm speaking the truth that I'm fine. I have a little, you know, some bruising and, and stuff like that, swollen, you know, what have you, but I'm okay. You know, I'm not hooked up to my chemo machine. What life is about is going from the lesser to the greater and being able to contribute. The people that need help First of all, don't ever quit, ever, 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 ever. Don't ever quit, because if you quit, you just gave credibility to your sickness. It's just the miracle how you know this all came about. When the credibility is there, then you start to believe you're sick. When you believe that you're sick, not that you're denying that you're sick, but when you believe that it's truth, the sickness wins. You don't ever climb out of that hole, ever. I surround myself with the best of the best, and I'm proud to have him as my friend and uh, one of my students, and I look forward to him to being the champion that he is. Don't ever, ever take no as an answer, ever, because there is just the wrong person in front of you at that time. The people that will help you will show up. If you want to be something, you, you want to accomplish something, there's only one way to do it, and that's hard work. And uh, Mike's the kind of guy that, that will do that. Thank you.